Oh, functions. We've been talking about functions for days, but there are so many things in life that are functions. And, and an example is this picture to the bottom right. Uh, it, the amount of miles you can drive in a car is a function of how much gas you have in the car. You put in a certain amount of gas, you'll be able to drive a certain amount of miles. That's just one of the many uh, examples of functions in our daily lives. And today, and in this lesson, lesson 17, uh, we're going to talk about different representations of functions or proportional relationships, but specifically functions um, and linear functions. And we're going to compare them. So you might have an, uh, a function that's in a, an equation and a function that's in a table, and you have to compare which one has a greater rate of change, which one has a different, uh, which one has a greater uh, initial value. You might have one on a graph. Same idea. We're going to be looking at different ways to compare functions and look at functions. So this starts on page 387. Please make sure you're there on page 387. All right. So here's our problem of the day. I'd like you guys to read this through. With me, I'm going to read it through once, and then I'm going to have you guys read it through on your own and try it. So it says the equation d equals 30t gives the distance a sailfish swims in meters as a function of time in seconds. The graph shows the distance an Olympic athlete swims over time, and you can see on the graph it is also in uh, meters per second. So um, the question asked here is does the athlete or the fish swim faster so we're talking about swimming and rates of swimming and from the given information you're given a, an equation that has to do with the sailfish and a graph that has to do with the olympic swimmer the olympic athlete this is the graph so which one swims faster you maybe take a guess but give a reason give give what their speeds are based off of that information so i'm going to give you guys a chance to pause and try. All right, looking at the graph of the Olympic swimmer, um, that's where we can find our rate of change or our slope by doing rise over run. So you can pick any two points. You can go from zero because that's a point on here. You can go up to, I don't know, eight. So it goes eight meters. So that's our rise. Uh, in four seconds. So that's just one example. So for the swimmer, we have eight meters for four seconds. And when you reduce that, eight divided by four, eight over four reduces to two over one. So two meters per second. All right, so that's the swimmer speed. It goes two meters per second. It's actually not bad. Um, now let's look at the, the sailfish. The sailfish is represented by the equation d equals 30t, where d is the distance and 30, uh, or t is the time. So distance or meters is 30 per second. So that means the rate of change is that 30. That's our rate of change because it's multiplied by the variable. And that means that the swimmer, or the, the sailfish will go 30 meters per second which is a lot faster than what the swimmer does and that makes sense fish are made to swim um, humans can definitely swim but not as fast as fish in general and that's quite a bit difference but you can see that from de depending on what the representation is and if you turn the page that actually answers number one does the athlete or the sailfish swim faster it's the sailfish right the sailfish because 30 meters per second versus two meters per second all right so that what I'd like you to look at one other example. This is number two. It has to do with graphs, uh, just a whole bunch of lines on a graph. And this is comparing multiple different representations on the same format, on the same graph. So it says lines A, B, C, and D model four different linear functions. List the lines in order from steepest to least steep. So think about steep. The steeper you go, the harder it is to get up a hill. So you can just look at what's steepest. That also will have to do with the slope. So A is the steepest 
B is the next steepest. C is the next steepest. And D is the least steep because it's the closest to being flat or straight left and right. And now, now the, the second part of this question is to find the slope of each line. All right, so each one you have to do the rise over run. They, they showed that for A, it is 10 or 10 over 1. So we don't need to do anything else with A. But for B, you got to find two points on there that you could map. So here's a point up here. Here's a point right here. So I see it's going up from 6 to 9. So up 3 and over 1. So the slope is 3 or 3 over 1. For C, if I pick a point here, I pick a point here, the rise is 2 over 4, so I could have picked one in between. So that 2 over 4 or 1 over 2, so if I did like here to here, it's up 1 and over 2. So 1 half. So the smaller the number, the less steep it is. And let's do D. I see a point right here, and I see a point right here. So that rises one and runs four, so the slope is one fourth. So you can compare these four linear functions by seeing their slope. You can also compare them by looking at their y-intercept. You can clearly see that line C starts at up at four, whereas all the other ones start around zero. I don't know if line A is actually at zero. It might be at negative one because it's not shown there. But we can. One of the biggest way we're, ways we're going to compare functions is using their slopes. So. Um, Question C says, how does the steepness of the lines relate to their slopes? Well, bigger slopes equals steeper lines. The steeper it is, the larger the slope it's going to be. Question D, how can the, how can the graph help you determine which of two increasing linear functions has a greater rate of change? Look for which has the steepest line. So if the steeper lines have a greater slope, just look for the steepest line. So steepness really does correlate to that rate. So to finish up, suppose you, you graph the equation for a sailfish from the triad problem in the same coordinate plane as the, line, uh, the athlete's line. Which line would be steeper? Like you to answer this one on, on your own. Which line would be steeper? Would it be the athlete or the sailfish? All right, that's it for lesson 17.1, where we're comparing properties of two functions, each represented in different ways, whether it's a, an equation, a graph, uh, words, or maybe a table. All right, that's it. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you later.